Hello guys and welcome back to another video on my channel. Now today I'm going to give you guys my reaction to Luton's 1-0 away win to Hull City. What a good performance that was against Hull. Fantastic performance. It reminded me of Huddersfield away. In the first half we didn't really do much but then in the second half we obviously controlled it. Such a good performance. But I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on the away win against Hull and yeah... I'm so happy. I'm honestly so happy. Obviously, I went to watch the game in a different location. I didn't watch it at home. Obviously, making sure that I am social distancing, of course. But, yeah, I watched it at a different location. And, obviously, that gave Luton a little bit of luck. And I will be doing that for the game against Blackburn as well. So, I'm looking forward to see what we can do on Wednesday. But I do not want to get my hopes up. Because that's the problem with Luton. You get your hopes up and then it all comes down like crushing downs and fingers crossed that does not happen for the game against Blackburn on Wednesday but if you guys could drop a like on this video that would be amazing obviously comment down below your thoughts about the whole city game as well and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe that's the most important thing it's free make sure you subscribe to the channel so yeah I'm going to give you guys my pre-match thoughts so when the team lineup came out I was very happy with it like I didn't have any problems with it I was happy to see Glenn Ray back in the side. I love Glenn Ray. For me, he's the future captain of Luton Town Football Club. Hopefully, he signs a new deal. Glenn Ray, for me, is amazing. And I thought he was my man in the match, if I'm honest. Brilliant player. He's so good. Always making those key tackles and obviously really good pass on the ball. The text the back four very well. So, for me, Glenn Ray was my man in the match. So, yeah, I was really happy to see him back in the starting eleven, But I was so worried because, obviously, Dan Potts, got injured during the warm-up and I was thinking to myself oh that's our aerial threat gone because Dan Pox is really good like for set pieces you know so I was a little bit worried but Craney did a really good job at left back obviously the first 15 minutes of this game Hull pretty much like took control of it as expected they are the home side they went with a different approach in this game against Luton they had like two target players Tom Eves, I can't remember the other player's name, but they had two strikers, and what they would do is they'd cross the ball into those two strikers, and they would aim for those two strikers because they had that aerial threat. And yeah, pretty much from the get go, Hull were at us. But then we took control of the game, we had a few chances, didn't test their keeper really, and yeah, it was a quite boring first half, if I'm honest. And to be fair, from Hull's perspective, it looked like they were just playing for a draw. They weren't playing for the win. I felt like they just didn't have any confidence, as expected, because they've just been beaten 8-0 by Wigan. They had no confidence to obviously grab a goal. And obviously this defeat for me means Hull are relegated. I can't see Hull surviving this at all, really. So... Obviously, the fans will be gutted and devastated, but I think that like hatred which they have at the moment is mainly towards the owners, not the players. But obviously, some hatred will go towards the players and the management. But yeah, first half, just like the Huddersfield game, a bit boring. We did create some chances, but apart from that, there wasn't much to it. In the second half, it was perfect. Brilliant performance. I think we're very unlucky to only score one goal. We had so many good opportunities in that second half. There was one opportunity where James Collins had like a diving header, just missed it. Danny Hilton had an opportunity. George Moncur had an opportunity. I think he shot where he could have easily passed the ball. Glenn Ray had a fantastic opportunity from two yards out from the corner to head it home. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to do that. But the most important thing what happened in that second half was Loa Loa shooting from distance. I think the keeper should have done a little bit better. It wasn't really in the corner, so I do think the keeper could have done better. I don't know if I'm being like really harsh on the keeper, but I felt he could have done a little bit better. But for me, good finish by Lawalawa. If you get it on target, it's up to the keeper at the end of the day. So it was a fantastic performance. And to be fair, I will mention it because we are very lucky. And some people may say, Lewis, how are we lucky? James Collins could have got sent off. And Nathan Jones mentioned this in his interview after the game. And to be fair, the whole City player could have got sent off as well. At the time, I didn't really notice it. But then, obviously, looking back at replays, I now see it. James Collins, like, headbutting the whole City player. 
needs to learn to control his emotions, James Collins, especially in a big game like today. Should have really kept his emotions to himself. Okay, you've just been kicked. Do not react. And he reacted, and he nearly knocked the guy out with his head. Very close, and I don't know how he didn't get sent off. And I don't know how the referee didn't spot this. So we're very lucky to have 11 players on the pitch. But then again, but then again, like people said on social media, he got kicked and he reacted to it. So if there was like VAR in this game, then I could see two players get sent off. But obviously there isn't VAR in the championship. And we are very lucky to have Collins on the field. I thought the substitutions made by Nathan Jones were the right ones. I wanted the likes of Loire Loire, Danny Hilton and George Moncur to come on slightly a little bit earlier. But we got the goal, we got the win, and that's what counts. I don't care how many goals we win by, I just want the three points. Especially at this point in the season. It's business end of the season. Whatever win we can get, you get it. I don't care how we get it. I don't care if it's a scrappy 1-0 win. I don't care. I just want the three points. And I think today we deserve the three points. A great second half performance from us. And Hull, I don't know why they were playing for a draw. They definitely wasn't playing for a win. You can tell in their mentality, they definitely wasn't playing for a win. I don't know if they thought they could get like three points away to Cardiff. Because Cardiff are in good form. So if they had that type of mentality, that's quite bad. But for Hull, for me, they're down. I can't see them staying up and obviously tomorrow we do see Nottingham Forest play Barnsley. Nottingham Forest need one more point to confirm a playoff play so fingers crossed Nottingham Forest can get the three points against them but what a great performance this game was for Luton. What a great performance and I'm so happy. Fingers crossed Wednesday we can do it. I think there's about five teams that can go down. Wigan, Luton, Charlton, Middlesbrough and Birmingham. Obviously, we haven't heard about Sheffield Wednesday yet. They could get minus points. So, if they do, that could be six teams that could go down on the final day of the season. But what Luton need to do, and it's quite simple, is win a football match. That's all we need to do. Since the restart, we haven't won at home. We need to change that. Blackburn have not won an away game since the restart. So, we need to take advantage of it. It's simple, get the three points. We are in control of staying up. And that's exactly what we want. We don't want to rely on other teams. We want to rely on, on ourselves to win a football game. And we can. Beat Blackburn, we stay up. It's that simple. And fingers crossed we can do that on Wednesday. I just want to quickly mention as well, if we draw at home to Blackburn, obviously we will then have to rely on other teams to drop points. So we are relying on the likes of Leeds to beat Charlton. Now Leeds have already won the league. Will they be on like honeymoon like period? Or will they be willing to win this game? As they will lift the trophy that day. So fingers crossed they don't want to lift the trophy on the back of a defeat. And I don't think like Bielsa is that type of manager to allow Leeds to not perform. I think he wants Leeds to perform. So fingers crossed Leeds can get a home win against Charlton we just need to make sure we outdo what Charlton can do and I did say in my previous videos that Charlton, Hull and Barnsley will be the three teams to get relegated this season and hopefully that is the case and obviously Luton can stay up on Wednesday night so that's pretty much it for this video I think I've covered pretty much everything I need to cover for this video so guys if you enjoyed it make sure you drop a like comment down below your thoughts about this game if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to follow me across all my social media if you haven't done already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.